physician, I have to try and define what's going on and to reassure people, especially to reassure them that they're not going insane. Um, something like 10%, as I said, of impaired, visually impaired people get these, but no more than 1% of the people acknowledge them because they're afraid they will be seen as insane or something. And if they do mention them to their own doctors, they may be misdiagnosed. In particular, the notion is that if you see things or hear things, you're going mad. But the psychotic hallucinations are quite different. Psychotic hallucinations, whether they're visual or vocal, they address you, they accuse you, they seduce you, they humiliate you, they jeer at you. You interact with them. Um, there is none of this quality of being addressed with these Charles Bonnet hallucinations. There is a film, you've gone into, you're seeing a film which had nothing to do with you. Well, that's how people think about it. There's also a rare thing called temporal lobe epilepsy. And sometimes, if one has this, one may feel oneself transported back to a time and place in the past. You're at a particular road junction, you smell chestnuts roasting, you hear the traffic, all the senses are involved, and you're waiting for your girl. And it's that Tuesday evening back in 1982. And the temporal lobe hallucinations are all sense hallucinations, full of feeling, full of familiarity, located in space and time, coherent, dramatic. The Charles Bonnet ones are quite different. So in the, the Charles Bonnet hallucinations, you have all sorts of level, from the geometrical hallucinations, the pink and blue squares the woman had, up to uh, quite elaborate hallucinations with figures, and especially faces. Faces, and sometimes deformed faces, are the single commonest thing in these hallucinations. And one of the second commonest is cartoons. So, what is going on? Fascinatingly, in the last few years, it's been possible to do functional brain imagery, to do fMRI on people as they are hallucinating. And in fact, to find that different parts of the visual brain are activated as they are hallucinating. When people have these simple geometrical hallucinations, the primary visual cortex is activated. This is the part of the brain which perceives edges and patterns. You don't form images with your primary visual cortex. When images are formed, a higher part of the visual cortex is involved in the temporal lobe. Um, and in particular, one area of the temporal lobe is called the fusiform gyrus. And it's known that if people have damage in the fusiform gyrus, they may lose the ability to recognize faces. But if there's an abnormal activity in the fusiform gyrus, they may hallucinate faces. And this is exactly what you find in some of these people. There's an area in the anterior part of this gyrus where teeth and eyes are represented. And that part of the gyrus is activated uh, when people get the, the deformed hallucinations. There is another part of the brain which is especially activated when one sees cartoons. It's activated when one recognizes cartoons, when one draws cartoons, and when one hallucinates them. It's, it's very interesting that that should be specific. There are other parts of the brain which are specifically involved with the recognition and hallucination of buildings and landscapes. And around 1970, it was found that there were not only parts of the brain, but particular cells face cells were discovered around 1970. And now we know that there are hundreds of other sorts of cells which can be very, very specific. So you may not only have car cells, you may have um, Aston Martin cells. <laughs> um, I saw an Aston Martin this morning, I, I had to bring it in. <laughs> and, 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 and now it's, it's in there somewhere. So. Um, uh, now, at this level, in what's called the infratemporal cortex, uh, there are only visual images of, or figments or fragments. It's only at higher levels uh, that the other senses join in and there are connections with memory and emotion. 
And in the Charles Bonnet syndrome, you don't go to those higher levels. You're in these levels of inferior visual cortex where you have thousands and tens of thousands and millions of images or figments or fragmentary figments all neurally encoded in particular cells or small clusters of cells. Normally, these are all part of the integrated stream of perception or imagination, and one is not conscious of them. It is only if one is visually impaired or blind that the process is interrupted. And instead of getting normal perception, you are getting an anarchic, convulsive stimulation or release of all of these visual cells in the infratemporal cortex. So suddenly you see a face, suddenly you see a car, suddenly this and suddenly that. The mind does its best to organize and to give some sort of coherence to this, but not terribly successfully. When these were first described, it was thought that they could be interpreted like dreams, but in fact people say, I don't recognize the people, I can't form any associations, Kermit means nothing to me. You don't get anywhere uh, thinking of them as dreams. Um, well, I've more or less said what I wanted. I think just, um, I just want to recapitulate and say this is common. Think of the number of blind people. There must be hundreds of thousands of blind people who have these hallucinations but are too scared to mention them. So this sort of thing needs to be brought into uh, uh, into notice for patients, for doctors, for the public. Finally, I think they are infinitely interesting and valuable for giving one some insight as to how the brain works. Charles Bonnet said 250 years ago he wondered how, the, thinking of these hallucinations, how, as he put it, the theater of the mind could be generated by the machinery of the brain. Now, 250 years later, I think we're beginning to glimpse how this is done. Thanks very much. That was superb. Thank okay. you so much. Okay, thank you. You speak about these things with so much insight and uh, empathy for your patients. I mean, have, have you yourself experienced any of the syndromes you write about? Uh, I was afraid you would ask that. <laughs> um, well, um, uh, yeah, a lot of them, and actually I'm a little visually impaired myself. I'm blind in one eye and not terribly good in the other. And I, I see the geometrical hallucinations, but they stop there. And they don't disturb you? You've, you've, because you understand what's doing it, it doesn't um, make you worry? Um, well, they don't disturb me any more than my tinnitus. Um, <laughs> which, which, which I ignore. Um, they occasionally interest me. I have many pictures of them in my notebooks. I've gone and had an fMRI myself to see how my visual cortex is ticking over. And, um, uh, and when I see all these hexagons and complex things, which I also have in visual migraine, I, I wonder whether everyone sees things like this and whether things like cave art or ornamental art may have been derived from them a bit. That was an utterly, utterly fascinating talk. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.